So far, we created a great-looking output P&L sheet for historical figures. In addition, we calculated percentage variances and inserted conditional formatting. That's great. Starting from this lesson, we'll deal with the firm's balance sheet. Let's create a new sheet and name it Balance Sheet. I'll use the formatting macro to improve the layout of this sheet without wasting time. Great! Three new sheets have been added to our Excel file. Each serves as a source for one of the three historical years, 2014, 2015, and 2016. The three sheets do not have uniform structure. For example, in the sheet for 2014, the amounts of balance sheet items are shown in column D while the sheet for 2016 contains the amount in column E. We must be aware of this issue from the beginning. Very well. Having said that, we can move forward. I'll hold the control key and select all asset line items we see in the source sheet for 2016. Once I am ready, I'll copy these values and use the paste special values command to paste them in the output sheet. Then I'll do the exact same thing for liabilities. Select all values by holding the control key and pasting them in the output sheet with paste special. Great! Let's provide a clear indication that one of the groups is composed of assets and the other one is composed of liabilities. I'll simply write assets here and liabilities and equity below. Okay, we'll have to improve the sheet's formatting. The first thing I'll do is copy the header of the P&L table and paste it here. There's one issue that must be fixed, though. We should never show balance sheet values as if they illustrate the entire year. These are the values recorded at the end of the year. So I'll make sure all read December 2014, December 2015, and December 2016. Let's use cell styles to improve the layout of the rest of the table. These cells will be formatted with the so-called general cell style. While the two rows showing the sum of assets and liabilities and equity at the bottom will be formatted as totals. That's perfect. Okay. Last thing I would like to do here is add sum functions, summing assets and liabilities and equity. And at the bottom, we'll need a check, which will verify if the golden rule of accounting is satisfied. Assets must be equal to liabilities and equity. If the check shows a value that differs from zero, then that's an indication we haven't worked correctly.